Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Heheka, and I'm here to make a story. Now, before I start the story, I want to make a, a couple of warnings. One, my pronunciation is, isn't very good. For the past years of me studying, I always studied in my mind and never actually read the words out loud. Many of the studies from YouTube uh, that I receive have told me that if I want my pronunciation and um, you know the way I, I, I pronounce something correctly, I should read the things that I read out loud. So if this is true, I am going to go right ahead and read a book uh, right here. But I will actually read it uh, kind of out loud and I will make a lot of errors. So as I make a lot of errors, I may retrace and uh, I apologize for that. The story that I'm about to read is a uh, very important guidelines in our life. And I will be going over that in a second. But first, I want to give a thanks to my own mother. If it wasn't for my mother, I wouldn't be in a place uh, where I could study more than what I work. Um, and for keeping my room where I left it when I went to uh, another city, I can't name it, to work and to start my life at the age of 18. Um, harsh, <laughs> and to know the truth and the harsh of life. Um, as I uh, returned home after one year or two, uh, my mother kept my room, and I'm very thankful for that, and for allowing me to spend the time here of studying, um, so that when I prosper, she may also enjoy my own rich richness. Uh, so this is another reason why I work hard. <laughs> Now it is uh, 4.04 a.m. and I'm pretty sure she's getting up and uh, getting ready to go to work, which I am going to take her to work. Um, so I have a quite a good hour before finishing the story, so uh, let us begin. I'm reading this in a PDF, so let's start. The Man Who Desire Gold Bazir the chariot builder of Babylon was thoroughly discouraged. From his seat upon the low wall surrounding his property, he gazed sadly at his simple home and the open workshop in which stood a partially completed chariot. His wife frequently appeared at the open door. Her furtive glance in his direction reminded him that the meal bag was almost empty and he should be at work finishing the chariot hammering and hewing and polishing and painting, uh, stretching taut the leather over the wheel rims, preparing it for delivery so he could collect from his wealthy customer. Nevertheless, his fat, muscular body sat solidly upon the wall. His slow mind was struggling patiently with a problem for which he could, not fi he could find no answer. The hot, tropical sun, so typically of this valley of the Ephraim, Ephraites, I hope I spell in that right, beat down upon him mercifully, mercilessly, mercilessly. Beats of perspiration form upon his brow and thicket down unnoticed to lose themselves in Thai hairy jungle on his chest. Beyond his home towered the high turrets, walls surrounding the king's palace. Nearby, cleaving the blue heavens, was the painted tower of the Temple of Bell. In the shadow of such a grandeur was his simple home and many other far less neat and well cared for. Babylon was like this, a mixture of grandeur and squalor, of dazzling wealth and direst poverty, crowded together without plan or system within the protecting walls of the city. Behind him, had he cared to look, turn a look the noisy chariot of the rich jostle and crowd aside the sandal, sandalsman's uh, tracemen, as well as the barefooted beggar. Even the rich were forced to turn into gutters to clear the way for the long line of slave water carriers. On the king's business, fifteen each bearing a heavy goatskin of water to be poured upon the hanging gardens. Bessin was too engrossed in his own problem to hear or heed the confusing hubbub of the busy city. 
It was the unexpected twinkle of the string from a familiar lyre that arose him from his revered reverie. I think I spelled that right. I don't know. He turned and looked into the sensitive, smiling face of his best friend, Kobe, the musician. May God bless thee with a great liberty, my good friend. Begin Kobe with an elaborate salute. Yet it does appear they have already been so generous thou needest not to labor. I rejoice with thee in thy good fortune. More, I will even share it with thee. Pray for thy purse, which must be bulging, else thy will be busy in your shop. Estra, but two humble shekels, and lend them to me until I after the nobleman's feet this night. Thou will not miss them ere they are returned. If I'd had two shekels, Benzir responded gloomily, to no one could I lend them, not even to you, my best of friends, for they would be my fortune, my entire fortune. No one lend his entire fortune, not even to his best friend. What? exclaimed Kobe, with a genuine surprise. Though I has not one shekel in thy purse, yet sit like a statue upon the wall? Why not complete that chariot? How else can... How else canst thou provide for thy noble appetite? Tis not like thee, my friend. Where is thy endless energy? Though something that stressed thee, have the gods brought to thee trouble? A torment of the god it must be, Bazir agreed. It began with a dream, a senseless dream, in which I thought I was a man of means. From my belt hung a handsome purse, heavy with coins. There were shekels which I cast with careless freedom to the beggar. There were pieces of silver with which I did buy finery for my wife and whatever I desire for myself. There were pieces of gold which made me feel assured of the future and unafraid to spend silver. A glorious feeling of contentment was within me. You would not have known me for thy were hard working friend, nor thou wouldst have known my wife. So free from wrinkles was her face and shining with happiness. She was again the smiling maiden of our early merry days. A pleasant dream, indeed, commented Kobe. But why should such a pleasant feeling as it aroused turn thee into a gloom statue upon the wall? Why, indeed? Because when I woke and remember how empty was my purse, a feeling of rebellion swept over me. Let us talk it over together, for, as sailors do say, we ride in the same boat, we too, as youngsters, we went together to the priest to learn wisdom. As young men, we shared each other's pleasure. As grown men, we have always been close friends. We have been content and subject of our kind. We have been satisfied to work long hours and spend our earnings freely. We have earned much coin in the years that have passed. Yet to know the joy that come from wealth, we must dream about them. Bah! Are we more than dumb cheap? We live in the richest city in all the world. The travelers do say none equal is wealth about us in much display of wealth, but of it we ourselves have not. After half a lifetime of hard labor, thou, my best of friends, hast empty purse, and sayest to me, May I borrow such trifling as trifle as two shekels until after the nobles feast this night? Then what do I reply? Do I say, here is my purse? Its content will I gladly share. No. I admit that my purse is empty as thine. What is the matter? Why can we not acquire silver and gold? More than enough for food and robes. Consider also our son, Benzir continue. Are they not seventeen following in the footsteps of their fathers? Need they in their family, and their son, and their son's family? live all their life in the midst of such treasury of gold? And yet, like us, be content to banquet upon sour gold milk and portrage. Never in all the years of our friendship thou hast talked like this before, Bazin. Kobe was puzzled. Never in all these years did I think like this before. 
from early dawn until darkness took me. I have labored to build the finest chariots that any man could make, soft, hardly hopping. Some day the gods will recognize my worthy deed and bestow upon me great prosperity. This they have never done. At last, I realize this they will never do. Therefore, my heart is sad. I wish to be a man of means. I wish to own land and cattle, to have fine robes and coin in my purse. I am willing to work for these things with all the strength in my back, with all the skills in my hand, with all the cunning in my mind. But I wish my labors to be fairly rewarded. What is the matter with us? Again, I ask you, why cannot we have our share, uh, our just share of good things to plentiful for those who have the gold which wish to buy them? Would I knew an answer? Gobi replied. No better than thou am I satisfied. My earnings from my lyre are quickly gone. Often must I plan and scheme that my family be not hungry. Also, within my breast is a bit longer for lyre large enough that it may truly sing the strain of music that I do search through my mind. With such an instrument could I make music finer than even the king has heard before. Such a lyre thou shalt have. No man in all Babylon could make it sing more sweetly. Could make it sing so sweetly. Not only the king, but the gods themselves will be delighted. But how mayest thou secure it while we both of us are as poor as a king's slave? Listen to the bell. Here they come. He pointed to the long column of half-naked, sweating bearers plodding laboriously up the narrow street from the river. Five abreast they march, each bent under a heavy gold skin of water. A fine figure of man, he who doth lead them, could be indicated the wearer of the bell who marched in front without a load. A prominent man in his own country, it is easy to see. There are many good figures in line, Mazir agreed, as good men as, as we. Tall, blonde man from the north, laughing black man from the south, little brown man from the nearest country, all marching together from the river to the garden. Back and forth, day after day, year after year, not of happiness to look forward to. Bears of straw upon which to sleep, hard green portraits to eat. Pity the poor brutes, Kobe. Pity them I do, yet thou dost make me see how little better off are we. Free men though we are called ourselves, that is true, Kobe, unpleasant thought thought it be. We do not wish to go on year after year living slavish lives, working and working and working, getting nowhere. Might we not find out how other acquires gold as do as they do? Kobe inquired. Perhaps there is some secret we might learn if we bought sought from those who knew, replied Bazir thoughtfully. This very day, suggested Kobe, I did not pass our old friend, Akrit riding in his golden chariot. This I would say, he did not look over my humble head as many at his station might consider his right. Instead, he did wave his hand that all onlookers might see him pay greeting and bestow his smile of friendship upon Gobi, the musician. He is claimed to be the richest man in Babylon, Bezir mused. So rich, the king is said to seek his golden heir in affair of treasury. Kobe replied, So rich, Bezir interrupted. I fear that if I should meet him in darkness of the night, I should lay my hand upon his fat wallet. Nonsense, reproved Kobe. A man's wealth is not the purse he carries. A fat purse quickly empties if there be no golden street to refill it. Acker has an income that constantly keeps his purse full, no matter how liberally he spends. Income that is the thing, ejaculated Bansir. Nice word. I wish an income that will keep flowing into my purse whether I sit upon the wall of travel to far lands. Sorry. I wish an income that will f keep flowing into my purse whether I sit upon the wall or travel to far lands. 
Eckert must know how a man can make an income for himself. Don't suppose it is something he could make clear to mine as slow as mine? Me think he did teach his knowledge to his son, no Mazir, Kovis responded. Did he not go to never the end, so it is told that at the end become without aid from his father, one of the richest men in that city? Kobe, thou brightest to me a rare thought, and you like gleam in Bazir's eyes. It is cost, cost nothing to ask wise advice from a good friend, and accurate was always that. Never mind though our purse be empty as a falcon's nest of a year ago, let that not detain us. We are wearing of being without gold in the midst of plenty. We wish to become mean, men of means. Come, let us go to Agret and ask how we also may acquire income for ourselves. I speak with the truth inspiration, Bazir. The brightest to my mind, I knew understanding thou make makest me to realize the reason why we have never found any measure of wealth. We never sought it. Thou hast labored plentifully to build the starches chariot in the Babylon? To that purpose was devoted your best endeavors. Therefore, at it thou didst succeed, I strove to become a skillful lyre player. And at it I did succeed. In those things toward which we asserted our best endeavor, we succeeded. The gods were content to let us continue content to let us continue thus. Now, at last, we see the light, bright like that from the rising sun. It has been as us to learn more that we may prosper more. We, with a new understanding, we shall find honorable ways to accomplish our desire. Let us go to Akrat this very day, Bazir and Urch. Also, let us ask all the friends of our boyhood days, who have fared no better than ourselves, to join us, join us that they too may share in his wisdom. Thou wert ever thus thoughtful of thy friends, Bazir. Therefore hast thou many friends. It shall be as thou sayest. We go this day and take them with us. Now, before I continue with the story, um, we can tell for the con content of this story is that a man desired richness and that he worked every day of his life but never received enough money to gain anything that he really wanted, not enough money to spend, always having either zero money or none at all, uh, zero little money or none at all. Now, this actually teaches us about our everyday life. So please try to take the story a little bit serious and uh, with an uh, open mind and open heart. Because whatever you are seeing right here is it, it is exactly the same thing that you will see in real life. And at the same time, the ex same experience of us searching for richness, it is contained within these books. Now, also, I would like to warn others that um, are religious. Uh, we know a Babylon from religious belief were to be a city where everyone used to be together, all nationality. God went down and separated that na nationality because they built a tower up to the sky where they could reach the God. That's how proud they were. So God, um, God said, let us separate them, disperse them. And so they did, confusing them with that language. That's why they named Babylon the confused city. We know that the story uh, shows almost like, uh, if you read the book of this story, they, they uh, how do I say it? They admire Babylon because that's where the astrom astronomers, the, uh, uh, the mathematicians, mathematic engineers, all, all, those, all those people were great. In, in these days and that's where the the beginning the principle started so it is not that I am trying to uh, revere Babylon in any way okay it is actually to tell the stories about our daily -day life and something that we always look for but always slip our grass now to continue the story The richest men in Babylon. 
In old Babylon, there once lived a certain very rich man named Agrat. Far and wide, he was famed for his great wealth. Also, was be famed for his liberty. He was generous in his charities. He was generous with his family. He was liberal in his own expense. But nevertheless, each year his wealth increased more rapidly than he spe spent it. And there were certain friends of younger days who came to him and said, "You, Akrit, selling that raw. I'm sorry. You, a car, a cat, are a cat. I'm gonna say a cat, okay? You, a cat, are more fortunate than we. You have become the rich, richest man in all Babylon, while we struggle for existence. You can wear the finest garment and you can enjoy the rarest food." While we must be content with the, if we can clothe our family in raiment that is presentable and feed them as best we can, yet once we were equal, we studied under the same master, we played in the same games, and in neither the studies nor the game did you outshine us, and in the years since, you have been no more honorable citizens than we. Nor have you worked harder or more faithfully in so far as we can judge. Why then, should a fickle face single you out to enjoy all the good things of life and ignore us who are equally deserving? Thereupon Arkhat remonstrated, remonstrated with them, saying, "If you have not acquired more than a bear assisted in a year since we were youth." It is because you either have failed to learn the laws that govern the building of wealth, or else you do not observe them. Thickofe is a vicious goddess who brings no permanent good to anyone. On the contrary, she brings ruins to almost every man upon whom she showers unearned gold. She makes wanton spenders, who soon dissipate. All twenty-two they receive and are left besieged by overwhelming appetite and desire they have not the ability to gratify. It. Yet others whom she favors become miser and hoard their wealth, fearing to spend what they have, knowing that they do not possess the ability to replace it. They further are besieged by fear of robbers and doom themselves to live of emptiness and secret misery. Others there, others there pro probably are, who can take unearned gold and add it to it and continue to be happy and content citizens, but so few are they. I know of them, but by hearsay, think you of the men who have inherited southern wealth and see if these things are not so. His friend admitted that. Of the men they knew who had inherited well, these words were true, and they besought him to explain to them how he had become possessed of such much prosper prosperity. So he continued, "In my youth, I looked about me and saw all the good things there were to bring happiness and contentment, and I realized that wealth increased the potency, potency of all these. Wealth is power." With wealth, many things are possible. One may ornament the home with the richest of furnishing. One may sell the distant seas. One may feast on the delicacies of the far lands. One may buy the ornaments of the gold worker and the stone polisher. One may even buy, build mighty temples for the gods. One may, one may do all these things, and may other in which there is delight for the sense of the gratifi gratification for the soul. And when I realized all this, I decided to myself that I would claim my share of good things of life. I will not be one of those who stand afar off, and vigorously watching others enjoy. I will not be content to clothe myself in the cheapest raiment that looked respectable. I will not be satisfied with the lot of a poor man. On the contrary, I will make myself a guest at this banquet of good things. Being, as you know, the son of a humble merchant, one of the large family with no hope of inheritance, and not being endowed, as you frank have so frankly said, 
with superior power of wisdom, I decided that if I was to achieve what I desire, time and study would be required. Oh, I love that. Let me read it one more time, guys. Let me read it one more time. So frankly said, with superior power of wisdom, I decided that if I was to achieve what I desire, time and study will be required. As for time, all men have it in abundance. You, each of you, have let slip by sufficient time too. Have made your made uh, have made yourself wealthy, yet you admit you have nothing to show except your good families, of which you can be justly proud. As for study, did not our wise teacher teach us that learning was two kinds? The one kind being the things we learn and knew, and the other being the training that taught us how to find what we do not know. Therefore, did I decide to find out how one might accumulate wealth? And when I have found out, to make this my task and do it well. For it is not wise that we should enjoy while we dwell in the brightness of the sunshine, for sorrow enough shall descend upon us when we depart for the darkness of the world of the spirit. I found employment as a scribe in the hall of records, and long hours each day I labor upon the clay tablet. Week after week and month after month I labor and yet my twenty-four earnings I had not to show, food and clothing and pensions to the gods, and other things of which I couldn't remember not what, absorb all my earnings. But my determination did not leave me. And one day, Agamish, the moneylender, came to my house, came to the house of the city master and ordered a copy of Ninth Law. And he said to me, I must have this in two days, and if th the task is done by time, two coppers will I give to thee. So I labored hard. But the law was long, and when Algamus returned, the task was unfinished. He was angry, and I had been his slave, he would have beaten me. But knowing the city master would not permit him to injure me, so I was unafraid. So I said to him, Algamus, you're a very rich man. Tell me how I may also become rich. And all night I will carve upon the clay, and when the sun rises, it shall be completed. He smiled at me and replied, You are a forward knife, but we call it a bargain. All that night I carved through my back pain and the smell of the wick made my head ache until my eyes could hardly see. But when he returned at sunup, the tablet were completed. Now, I said to tell me what you promised. You have fulfilled your part of our bargain, my son. He said to me kindly, and I am I ready to fulfill and I'm ready to fulfill mine. I will tell you these things you wish to know because I'm becoming an old man, and an old tongue loves to wag. Gosh, I love the old ways. And when youth comes to age for advice, he receives the wisdom of years. But too often does youth think that age knows only wisdom of, the, of days that are gone, and therefore profit not. But remember this, the sun that shines today is the sun that shone when thy father was born, and it will still be shining when thy last grandchild shall pass into the darkness. The thought of the youth, he continued, a bright light and sh that shines forth like a meteor that oft make brilliant the sky, but the wisdom of age is like a fixed star that shines so unchanged that the sailor may depend upon them to steer his course. Mark you well my words, for if you do not, sorry, mark you well my words, for if you do not, you will fail to grasp the truth that I would tell you, and you will think that your night work has been in vain. Then he looked at me shrewdly from under his shaggy brown and said in a low, forceful tone, I found the road to wealth when I decided that I part of all I earned was mine to keep. And so will you. 
Then he continued to look at me with a glance that I could feel pierce me, but said no more. Is that all? I asked. That was sufficient to change the heart of a cheap herder, cheap herder into the heart of a money lender, he replied. But all I earn is mine to keep, is it not? I demanded. Far from it, he replied. Do you not pay the garment maker? Do you not pay the sandal maker? Do you not pay for things you eat? Can you live in Babylon without spending? What have you to show for your earnings of the past mouth? What for the past years? Fool! You pay to everyone but yourself, Dollard. You labor for others, as well be slave and work for what your master gives you. To eat and wear. If you did keep for yourself one tenth of all twenty six you earn, how much would you have in a ten years? My knowledge of number did not forsake me, and I answered, As much as I earn in one year. You see, speak but half the truth, he retorted. Every gold piece you save is a slave to work for you. Every copper is earned it is child. Ugh. Every copper it earned is child that also can earn for you. If you will become wealthy, then what you say must earn, and its children must earn, that all may help to give to you the abundance you crave. You think I cheat you for the, your long night work, he continued, but I'm paying you a thousand times over if you have the intelligence to grasp the truth I offer you. I part all of all you earn is yours to keep. It should not be not less than the tenth no matter how little you earn. It can be as much more as you can afford. Pay yourself first. Do not buy from the cloth maker and the sandal maker more than you can pay out of the rest and still have enough food and charity and penance to the gods. Wealth, like a tree, grows from a tiny seed. The first copper you save is the seed from which your tree of wealth shall grow. The sooner you plant that seed, the sooner shall the tree grow. And the more faithfully you nourish and water that tree with consistent, consistent saving, the sooner you may bask in your continent beneath its shade. So saying, he took his tablet and went away. I thought much about what he said to me, and it seemed reasonable. So I decided that I would try it. Each time I paid, I took one from each ten piece of copper and hid it away. And strange as it may seem, I was no shorter for fun than before. I noticed little difference as I managed to get along without it. But often I was tempted, as my hoard began to grow, to spend it for some of the good things the merchant display brought by camels and shipped from the land of I'm gonna say this. I'm definitely gonna spell this wrong. For as Nisha, for for Nisha, for Nisha. I'm gonna say in Phoenicia. Don't don't kill me, please. Phoenicia. But I wisely refrained. A twelve month after, Algamish had gone, and he again returned and said to me, "Son, have you paid yourself not less than one tenth of all you have earned for the past year?" I answered proudly. Yes, master, I have. That is good, he answered, beaming upon me. And what have you done with it? I have given it to Esmer, the brickmaker, who told me he was traveling over the far sea and in tear he would buy for me the rarest jewels of the, of the physicians, which when he returned, we shall sell these at a high price and divide the earnings. Every fool must learn, he growled. But why trust the knowledge of a brick maker about jewels? Would you go to a bread maker to inquire about the stars? No, but my tunic, you will go to the astrologer. If you have the power to think, your savings are gone youth. You have jerked your wealth tree by the root. But plant another and try again. And next time, if you will have advice about a jewel, go to the jewel merchant. If you will know the truth about sheep, go to the herdsman. 
Advice is one thing that is freely given away, but watch that you take only what is worth having. He who take advice about saving from one who is inexperienced in such matter shall pay with his saving for proving the false falsity of their opinion. Saying this, he went away. And it was as he said, For the physicians are scoundrels and sold to Asmer worthless bits of glass that looked like twenty-eight gems. But as Algamish had bid me, I again saved each tenth copper, for I now have formed the habit and is no longer difficult. Again, twelve months later, Agamish came to the room of the scribe and addressed me. What progress have you made since last I saw you? I have paid myself faithfully, I replied, and my savings I have entrusted to Agar, the shield maker, to buy bronze, and each fourth month he does pay me the rental. That is good. And what do you do with the rental? I do have a great feast with honey and fine wine and spice cake. Also, I have bought me a scarlet tunic. And some day I shall buy me a young ass upon which to ride. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, um to the uh, to express something in here. Ass in the back in the day is a donkey, okay? I am not talking about a young like a girl asked to ride okay it's, it's a donkey okay so he meant a donkey to ride and someday I should buy me a young ass upon the wits to ride to with Algamish laugh do you eat the children uh, you do eat the children uh, sorry you do eat the children of your savings and how do you expect them to work for you and how can they have children that will also work for you? First get thee an army of golden slaves, and then many a rich banquet may you enjoy without regret. So saying he again went away. Nor did I again see him for two years. When he once returned, and his face was full of deep lines, and his eyes dropped, dropped for he was becoming a very old man, he said to me, A cart. Hast thou yet achieved the wealth thou dream of? And I answer, not yet, all that I desire. But some I have, and it earns more, and is earning earn more. And do you still take the advice of a brick maker? About brick making, they give good advice, I retorted. Arkad, Arkad, he continued, you have learned your lesson well. You first learn to live upon less than you could earn. Next, you learn to seek advice from those who were competent through their own experience to give. And lastly, you have learned to make gold work for you. You have taught yourself how to acquire money, how to keep it, and how to use it. Therefore, you are competent for a responsible position. I am becoming an old man. My son thinks only of spending and gives no thought of to earning. My interests are great, and I fear too much for me to look after. If you will go to Nipper and look after my land there, lands there, I shall make you my partner, and you shall share in my estate. So I, when I went to Nipper and took charge of his holding, which were were large, and because I was full of ambition and because I had mastered the three law of successfully handling wealth, I was enabled to increase greatly the value of his properties. So I prospered much, and when the spirit of Algamas departed for the spe sphere of darkness, sphere, sphere of darkness, I did share in his estate, as he had arranged under the law. So spake Arkad. And when he had finished his tale, one of his friends said, You were indeed fortunate that Algamish made you an heir. Fortunate is only in that I the desire <clears throat> Fortunate only in that I desire to prosper before I first met him. For four years did I not prove my definities of purpose by keeping one tenth of all earned?
will you call a fisherman lucky who for years so studied the habit of the fish that which each changing wind he could cast his net about about them opportunity is a hoggy goddess Ooh, that's my I apologize that's my clock telling me I have 18 minutes to get ready which all I need to put my coat to bring my mother to work let me go back to where I was Will you call the fisherman lucky who for, for years saw study the habit of fish that with each changing wind he could cast his net about them? Opportunity is a hoggy, hoggy goddess who wastes no time with those who are unprepared. You have strong will power to keep on after you lost your first year saving. You are an unusual in that way, spoke up others and other. Willpower, retorted Arkat. What nonsense. Do you think willpower gives a man the strength to lift a burden the camel cannot carry, or to draw a load of the oxen cannot budge? Willpo willpower is but an unflinching purpose to carry a task you set for yourself to fulfillment. If I set for myself a task, be it ever so trifling, I shall see it through. How else should I co have confidence in myself to do important things? Should I say to myself for a hundred days as I walk across the bridge into the city, I will pick from the road a pebble and cast it into the stream. I would do it. If, one, if on the seventh day I pass by without remembering, I will not say to myself, tomorrow I will cast two pebbles, which will do as well. Instead. I will retrace my step and cast the pebble. Nor on the twentieth day would I say to myself, Accurate, this is useless. What does it avail you to cast a pebble every day? Throw in a handful and be done with it. No, I would not say that, nor do it. When I set my task for myself, I complete it. Therefore, I am careful not to start difficult and impractical tasks, because I love leisure. And then another friend spoke up and said, If what you tell is true, and it does seem as you have said reasonable, that being so simple, if all men did it, there would not be enough well to go around. Wealth growth wherever men assert energy, Ark said replied. If a rich man builds him a new palace, is the gold he pays out gone? No, the brick maker has part of it, and the labor has part of it, and the artist has part of it, and everyone who labors upon the house has part of it. Yet when the palace is there, sorry, yet when the palace is complete, it is not worth all its cause? And is the ground upon which it stands not worth more because it is there? And its ground that adjoined is not worth more because it's there. Wealth grows in magic ways. No man can prophesy the limit of it. I have not the, I am not the physicians built great. Uh, have not the physician built great cities on the barren coast with the wealth that comes from their ships of commerce on the seas? What then do you advise us to do that we also become rich? As still another of his friends. The year had passed, and we're no longer young men, and we have nothing put by. I advise that you take the wisdom of alchemists and say to yourself, A part of all I earn is mine to keep. A part of all I earned is mine to keep. The reason I repeated that is because it is important. It is talking about the one-tenth. Say in the morning when you first arise, say it at noon, say it at night, say each hour of the day, say it to yourself until the word stands out like letter of fire across the sky. Impress yourself with the idea, fill yourself with the thought, then take whatever portion seems wise, let it be not less than one tenth and lay it by. Arrange your other expenditure to do this if necessary. But lay by that portion first. Soon you will realize what a rich feeling it is to own a treasure upon which you alone have claimed. 
As it grows, it will stimulate you. A new joy of life will thrill you. Greater effort will come to you to earn more. Greater efforts will come to you to earn more. For of your increased earning, will not the same percentage be also to keep? Also yours to keep? Then learn to make treasure, uh, to learn to make your treasure work for you. Oh, that's an important word right there. Then learn to make treasure your treasure work for you. Make it your slave. Make his children his slave. Children slave. Children slave. <laughs> work for you. Oh man. Ensure an income for thy future. Look that at the age and forget not that in the days to come thou also will be numbered among them. Therefore, invest thy treasure in greatest caution that it be become not lost. Usurious rate of return at our deceitful siren that sing but to lure the unwary upon the rocks of loss and remorse. Provide also that thy family may not once once shall the God call thee to their realm. For such protection, it is always possible to make provision with small payment at regular intervals. Therefore, the provident man delays not an ex in expectation of a large sum becoming available for such a wise purpose. Counsel with wise men. Seek the advice of a man whose daily work in handling money. Let them save you from such an error as I myself made in entrusting my money to a judgment of Asmer, the brick maker. A small return and safe one is far more desirable than risk. Enjoy life while you are here. Do not overstrain or try to save too much. If one tenth of all you earn is as much as you can comfortably keep, be content to keep this portion. Live otherwise according to your income and let not yourself get niggardly niggardly and i g g a r d l y i'm not trying to say the bad word niggardly afraid to spend life is good and life is rich with things worthwhile and things to enjoy his friend thanked him and went away some were silent because they had no imagination and could not understand some were sar sarcastic because they thought that one so rich should divide with old friends not so fortunate. But some had in their eyes a new light. They realized that Algamesh had come back each time to the room of the scribe because he was watching a man work his way out of darkness into light. When that man had found the light, a place awaited him. No one could fill that place until he had for himself worked out his own understanding until he was ready for the opportunity. These latter were the ones who in the following year frequently revisit Arkat, who received them gladly. He counseled with them and gave them freely of his wisdom as men of a broad, uh, men broad experience are always glad to do. And he assisted them in so invent investing their saving that it would bring a, in a good interest with a safety and would neither be lost nor entangled in investment that pay no dividends. The turning point in these men's life came upon that day when they realized the truth that had come from Algamesh to Arkad and from Arkad to them. And that will be the end of this story for now. There are other parts in here, uh, which I don't know if there are stories, which I have not read yet. Um, I actually skipped through them, and I am now returning to my uh, original position to read the story and uh, familiarize myself with the concept of the story. You see, when we are out there in the world, we always want money. We always need money. There's a lot of people that said money ain't everything, but to be honest with you, money is power. Money is wealth. With money, just like the story said, you can go out and eat well instead of just eating oh, stuff from Aldi like I do. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you can enjoy the richness of um, going out to sea, traveling to 
um, Hawaii, traveling to France, traveling to Paris, whatever. But you can enjoy those with money. Without money, you can't enjoy life um, to its fullest. Let's just put it that way. While reading through these stories, I came upon many things that popped out at me. And I always read this part of the story two or three times a day. Um, well, actually, I read it two times, but reading other stories such as um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which had, amazing, it had some of the knowledge from this book. People said that the book that Rich Dad and Poor Dad um, had was uh, wrong because it was a scam or something like that. I didn't care what anybody else said. What I do is I read a book and I take the con concept, then read another book that give good guidelines and see if it says the same. See, in the book of Rich Dad and Poor Dad, it says, make money work for you. It is the same concept of Agamesh who said, make gold work for you, make it its slave, make its children, the copper, its slave and its children, children slave to work for you for your craveness. So these kind of books I always read, but I always look upon another book to see what is actually right and what is actually wrong. Throughout this story, I see that the man took wrong advice from the brick maker. The brick maker went to buy jewelry. To, but the brick maker doesn't know how to uh, discern what a jewel is rare, you know? It doesn't discern how much it may cost. It's like me saying, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy, uh, let's say I don't, I don't play games or something like that. I'm going to buy games, but I don't know nothing about games. And I bring a games that is no good. Um, or buy, um, go, you know, for example, let's, let's do something that I do know. Um, let's say Pokemon cards uh, back in the days and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I spent $100 on Pikachu, you know, and I bring it back. I was just scammed. Pikachu only cost like maybe 0.50 cents. But if I knew about the Pokemon cards and how to invest into it, I would have bought the Charizard for $100, saved it, or maybe, you know, wait for quite a little time to pass and my investment on that would have been um, at least two to three hundred dollars today you see what it showed is that you should not go to a person who is inexperienced about such topic so if I am going to talk go into about losing weight or something like that I shouldn't go to any normal person I should go to a, tra a fitness trainer he knows about about losing weight and about the body you know, uh, if I were to learn and study about a certain topic, any topic it may be, do not go to a person does, that does not go, does, does not know about the topic. So such as these, such as rich, richfulness and stuff like that, I can't go to my friend who is also poor and talk about rich. I can't tell him that. How, how, how do you think I should make money? He doesn't know how to make money at all. So instead, I should go, well, technically for me, I should go to a person, a seminar of people who had done uh, big money, who has big money from entrepreneur, who has a history right there showing that they are an entrepreneur and this is how they uh, invested and it shows proof and that they're qualified to teach other people about their experience so that we may learn the right experience instead of going to a seminar about a guy who just blah 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 about maybe different kind of books and doesn't even know and just make the richness from maybe books or 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 tv and stuff like that but don't know anything about anything else that you know pertain to his seminar so this actually teaching me that if you know if i'm if i'm going to actually learn something i should learn something from people who uh know the experience who are expertise in it okay um another thing i actually learn through the books as i'm actually going to be scrolling down because i only have four minutes now before i have to take my mind to work Actually, speaking about that, it just rambled my head, <laughs> which I probably need to read the book, uh, the book again, always. Um, but uh, the way that we live life is that we save money, and it showed through the book. It showed us those who save are also scared to spend. 
You know, you save, you save, save months and worry about spending. And that's how you live your life, you know. Um, then there are those who may save a little and then spend those little on a feast, such as going to hometown buffet or buy yourself a new PlayStation 4 or buy yourself a new camera. But then you see you're back to where you started. In this book, it taught you that you save a portion amount of your income. Maybe 10%, one-tenth, uh, I think. So I, I'm pretty sure it's 10% of what you may have, like $600, $60. You put it away, right? If you can afford that, one-tenth. Um, and then throughout the year, you make that kind of money, that 60 bucks that you save for one year, work for you instead of being spent on, 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 on something else. And that money that worked for you should also work for you and keep working for you. So that when you have abundance of money that work for you, Without your presence, such as, you know, I am home and I'm sleeping and I'm relaxing here. I'm going to put my feet up on my bed and I'm relaxing and money is making the money is still making for me, you know, so then I can enjoy myself, go out and and eat. Uh, I can go to, uh, uh, like I said, Hawaii and stuff like that. And I don't have to worry about money because money is being made already without my presence. So this is our things that I am actually me. OK, me. Things that I myself um, is being revealed to me, you know, how I am, how I am understanding it. And if it is true, the way that I'm understanding it is correct, then I am actually going to do the same thing. If um, getting to a job or something like that, I'm going to save just a little bit of money and I'll see how I can make that work for me by learning what, you know, you can invest. <laughs> and there is another part in here. Um, there are investing there's a topic called investing in gold for this book but anyway let me just uh, stop right there there are a lot of meanings in here and I will read this book uh, this story again when I return because there is a lot of meanings and those meanings that comes out that pops out write it down if you heard something that pops out it through this story write it down in a book because trust me when you get into another book you might forget the concept is easy to learn in my stay, but when you learn a concept from another book and another book and another topic and another skill, you might forget. So if you heard anything one more time that has popped out through this story, jog it down. I'm going to have to end this story uh, in my word, in my blabbling right now because it is 4.59 uh, a.m. and I'm supposed to have my coat on. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the story. If um, I uh, here's some um, real quickly, I never asked for a subscriber. I never asked for anything uh, out there of uh, subscriber likes or anything. If you want to hear more of these kind of story, just favor the channel. Um, there's go to the channel where you see the videos, put it on your favor, and you don't have to you know be worried about notification or something like that i don't need subscribers it's, it's on my first video that i ever made i did not make i'm not becoming a youtube hunter i don't receive any money and i don't need subscribers but if you want to see stuff like this um you know give me a message if you want to learn because this is what i'm learning um and favor the page so that you know if i put something new all you have to do is press that favor on your favorite list and you're back into my channel and that's it. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Oh, freak, it's five o'clock.